Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. It's me again Chelsea and today I have got the 21 books that I want to read in 2021. Now I've been seeing a lot of people do this. I know this is a very standard thing. People do this all the time but this is my first ever one. So <laughs> we'll see if I actually read these books. So the books on this list are a range from backlist to new-ish releases, although all of them I own. I haven't included any of my pre-orders that I've already bought. Um, I haven't included any books that I might possibly be buying, as in like next ones in sequels, unless I already own them. <sighs> so let's get started. So the first book on this list, one that I have to get to, is the City of Bones by Cassandra Clare, the first one in the Mortal Instruments series, the first one that kicks off her Shadowhunter whole saga. Ugh, I just need to get to this. This is the first book where we meet Clary and the Shadowhunters and everyone else. I have hopes to read the whole of the Shadowhunter world books this year, so fingers crossed I can actually finally get to it. The one thing I will mention at the start of this video is a lot of my descriptions for this will either be really vague or you know completely rubbish because I haven't read these books yet. Some of them I'll know tidbits about so I will obviously let you know if I know them but I don't think many of these books are unknown but I have included quite a few sequels in this list because I need to finish off many a trilogy, many a series so obviously all of the links will be down below and there will be Goodreads links so you can add them to your Goodreads if you use that platform. Now a couple of these books are also ones that I have already started and this one, this next one is definitely one of those and that is Inkheart by Cornelio Funk or Funke, I don't really know how to say her last name but I have already started reading this. I am over 200 pages in. I should really get this finished and I'm hoping to finish it this year. This is the first in the Inkheart trilogy. So we are following a young girl, Meggie, and her dad. And one day a stranger comes and knocks at that door and Meggie's dad, Mo, has to reveal an incredible secret. So it is middle grade. My problem with this book is that I have seen the film many many times and I absolutely adore the film but I'm struggling to get through the first book but I want to get through it so I can get onto the rest of the trilogy. Obviously there are no other movies made so I don't know how this story ends or how it's meant to continue on because the first book rounds off pretty well I think but we shall see hopefully this year and maybe I'll read the whole trilogy this year wouldn't that be amazing? <laughs> The next book on this list is one that I have discovered recently and that is Furyborn by Claire Legrand. Now I know this book features in an awful lot of my videos, I'm pretty sure I featured this in my January TBR video and I haven't actually managed to get to it as of yet. So this book is set across centuries, we are following two different women and I am so looking forward to actually getting through more of this. Like I don't... I don't know. Like the back of it is Blood by Kendar Blake and I absolutely adore her Three Dark Crowns series. I loved it. It's also got Lanny Taylor on the back of here and no one else I really know. Oh, Roshna Chokshi. I do know her. Vaguely. I haven't read any of her books. But yes, this is another one that is high on my list to read. It doesn't feel that way because I haven't got to it yet. But I have also recently purchased the second one and I'm looking to buy the third one before it goes out of stock completely as a hardback. And then I have all three as hardbacks and I can just like binge them. That is my plan. Um, but yeah, keep an eye out for a haul coming soon because I have the second one of this to haul and maybe the third one depending on if I go on a payday spree. <laughs> The fourth book on this list is Nevernight by Jay Kristoff and I have already started this book once before. I've decided to try and start it again. I really loved where I was but I put it down for too many months so I was going to just pick it up and start it completely again this month. Whether I will still have time I am not too sure but if not I am definitely planning on reading this and hopefully the whole series in 2021. If any of you don't know or you've been living under a rock, Jay Kristoff is coming out with his newest book, The Empire of the Vampire, this year in September and I managed to get a pre-order of the Waterstones edition with the Black Spray Edges so it will match this whole series that I've now got on my shelves. Oh my goodness, that was stressful. But also the hype for that, seeing all the hype for that has made me really 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 want to read this series just to read it because obviously I have read Aurora Rising but I know that it is closer to this writing style than that writing style so oh, I 
just I just need to read this. I am kind of ready to get my heart broken if I'm honest. Um, I haven't even said a description of this book. Does anyone need one? This is quite well known. We are following a young girl called Mia Corvair who is um, a young girl and she is off to join the Red Church which is basically an assassin school and she wants to set some wrongs that happened to her right. That is basically the gist of the story. I cannot wait to read this. I'm gonna say that about a lot of these books, pretty much all of these books if I'm completely honest, but it's true. I just can't wait. Like I've got so many fantastic books that I have on my shelves that I need to just get to. It needs to happen. <laughs> The next book is another one that I have said time and time again that I need to read and that is Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nagan. <sighs> I just got some of these books that are on this list. I've kind of obviously had them on my shelf for about a year or maybe longer depending on where they sit on like new releases and that sort of thing or when I've discovered them and I have to say being part of the book community online has seriously prompted me to buy a heck of a lot more books than I usually would. A heck of a lot of them are actually massively chunky obviously this one isn't included but a lot of the books on this list are you know kind of chunky so there's that but this is next on the list um this is set in a fantasy world where everyone is kind of in a cast system so the paper cast is like down the bottom i think yeah so the paper cast is fully human the steel cast is humans endowed with partial animal demon qualities and the moon cast is fully demon with whole animal demon features such as horns wings or fur on humanoid form and complete demon capabilities so this is following um a young girl i believe who has been brought to be one of the king's concubines i think Think. and I know this features a female female romance so I am really looking forward to actually like getting into this book and seeing what it's all about I've heard a lot of good things about it I'm hoping I really enjoy it I'm sure I will and yeah it's just another one that I finally need to get to book number six on this list is Master of Sorrows by Justin Call again I've spoken about this again it was on my January TBR again I haven't got to it yet but the thing is about this is I really am intrigued by the fact that this is set in a world where magic is seen as dangerous and there are people that are trying to infiltrate special places to try and get all of the magic pretty much. I think that's a terrible, terrible description. Um, but they're called avatars, warrior thieves capable of infiltrating the most heavily guarded vaults and only the most determined are trusted to resist the lure of magic. There you go, that's a better description from the back of the book. So this is on my list of books to actually read this year i know that the sequel comes out in may i think but i also think that's i don't know if that's the hardback as well or if that's just the paperback i know the paperback is coming out in may and obviously i need to get the paperback because this one is paperback half half to match but yeah this is yet another one that i've bought recently that i just need to read as you may notice throughout this video not only am i finishing series i am actually starting a heck of a lot more which is you know fun for me um and the next book is once again the start of a series book number seven is jade city by fonda lee this sounds amazing one of the descriptions on the back is um an epic drama reminiscent of the best classic hong kong gangster films but taking place in a fancy metropolis so gritty and well imagined that you'll forget you're reading a book now that is one of the many things that drew me in this is also one of the books that i have seen on many a list so that also recommended it for me um but the premise of this book is that jade is the lifeblood of the city janloon a stone that enhances a warrior's natural strength and speed it is mind traded stolen and killed for all controlled by two families equal in their power and ruthlessness when a modern drug emerges that allows anyone even foreigners to wield jade simmering tension between the two clans erupts into open war so you know this sounds amazing and i cannot wait to read it the next book once again is the start of a new series and that is malice by john gwynn i have heard so many things about this book and i really want to read it not only is the cover beautiful but the spine is just as beautiful so when it's displayed on my shelf it looks fantastic um but this is another series this one is I don't even know what without reading the back if I'm completely honest um I've seen it recommended a lot I just I don't know I'm starting to explore the fantasy section more the yeah the fantasy and the sci-fi section more in 
my bookshops when I actually go um, and there are books on there like this one that I have seen many a time and I've really been like attracted to the cover but it's a little bit chunkier so I was like no I don't want to read that I don't want to commit to it but now all I want to do is read chunky books and series is because I feel as though that is the best way to get the world building the characters that you fall in love with the emotional attachment all of it so I'm dedicating my life now to try and finish all these series that I'm starting which is fantastic but this one is set in the banished lands and they have a violent past where armies of men and giants clashed in a battle an uneasy peace reigns and but now giants stir once more the very stones weep blood and there are sightings of gigantic worms those who can still read the signs see a prophecy realised. Sorrow will darken the world as angels and demons make it their battlefield. Young Corbin watches env enviously as boys become warriors and yearns to join them, determined that he will make his family proud. It is only when everything he knows is threatened that he discovers the cost, the true cost, of becoming a man. As the kings look to their borders and priests beg answers from the gods, only a chosen few know that fate will of the world will be decided between two champions the black sun and the bright star and with their coming will be a war to end all wars now this sounds insane i but i can't even remember how many books there are in this series is it like five it says here four but i don't know if it goes past raf now um but yeah i am excited to finally get to this book the ninth book on this list is once again one that i have already started reading and that is the book of life by deborah harkness this is the third and final book in the trilogy the all souls trilogy but i believe there is like another one called time convert but i don't i think that focuses more on marcus which is one of the other characters in the books so this is the third one i am part way through it i kind of ugh, it's one of them so i'm 166 pages through this book i am really enjoying it i think my favorite book so far having not finished this one is the first one still for quite a lot of reasons i did really enjoy the second book which is more um which is set like in history which is quite interesting the things i love about this series is the history that is included throughout the books obviously there are vampires in the story and they have lived for thousands of years and that is so nice to see it represented as like historic to see how they've like to hear about their memories from like the 16th century or earlier or later and that sort of thing i really enjoy that i really find that fascinating i can't wait to see how this trilogy wraps up i do really need to just get on and finish this book if i'm honest and just get this trilogy done i would love to get this trilogy finished this year and if i can read this within the next couple of months then that's easily you know one a chunky book off my list and two a series finished for 2021 so that would be fantastic because at the end of this year i would really like to film a video showing how many series i actually finished this year which wouldn't that be great bearing in mind i'm starting a heck of a lot more <laughs> The tenth book on this list is YA and that is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. Um, I picked this up because I really enjoy YA like thrillery things because they're not as, you know, terrifying for a wuss like me as other books are. But yeah, so I picked this one up. I know the sequel is out. I am really interested in getting to that. I really like the thought of this. Like I don't really know a lot about this, but I do know that this is told in like mixed media. So there's like interviews and there's maps and there's all sorts of fun things. It's kind of like told in a case file almost, which is awesome. And from the sound of this book, it sounds very similar to how Karen M. McManus writes and I really love her writing. Um, this one is more... Uh, this one says five years ago schoolgirl andy bell was murdered by sal seeing it the police know he did it everyone in town knows he did it but having grown up in the same small town that was consumed by the murder pippa fitz Amby isn't so sure when she chooses the case as the topic for her final year project she starts to uncover secrets that someone in town desperately wants to stay hidden and if the real killer is still out there how far will they go to keep pip from the truth that sort of thing sounds amazing so hopefully i'll read this this year as with every list you should really include at least one non-fiction to read so for the year 2021 the one non-fiction that i actually want to read is this is going to hurt by adam k so this has gone on this has been on my shelf even for years years and i still haven't read it so this is um adam's kind of it's a collection of notes from when he was a practicing doctor i think but he's obviously changed the names and other details so that they remain anonymous but i am really looking forward to reading this like it's quite a short book it's just over 200 pages it really shouldn't take me long so i don't know why i keep putting it off i also have um twas the night shift before christmas on my shelf and i was determined to read this in 2020 so i could read that for christmas 
because that has also been on my shelf for a little while and I didn't do that. So maybe I'll read that this Christmas. We'll find out. But hopefully I actually get to this this year. So the next two books actually have the same title. The first one is Red Queen by Christina Henry and this is the second one in her Alice series. Um, this is set after Alice and Hatcher discover whatever they were looking for in the first book. I cannot remember it's been so long since i read that i think i read that in 2019 i remember really enjoying it though they are very dark retellings but this is one that has been sat on my shelf since i read that so almost two years now and i just want to get to it i really love christina henry's writing even though i seem to be lacking in reading her back catalogue which sucks but i can't wait to get to this one i know for a fact that with every book she just gets better so i can't wait to read this i'm hoping that by reading this one it'll spur me in to read all of her other back catalogues so like lost boy and the mermaid and i have got her newest book pre-ordered as well that is coming out in april i think april or may so maybe this year will just be a christina henry year i don't know <laughs> And the next book is Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard. So this is the start of this series. I have no idea. It's just called the Red Queen series. This is the first book we are following, a young girl called Mare. And the reds are the commoners and the silvers are all powerful, almighty royalty pretty much who have powers. But Mare possesses a deadly talent of her own and one day this comes to light and then her whole world kind of shifts. So I'm really looking forward to reading this series. I've had this on my shelf again for a while most of these books i have had on my shelf for a while and i just i need to read it i just need to start crossing off the books on my list so that my my own tbr number can actually come down <laughs> So we have yet more series that I want to start this year and the first one being The Raven Boys by Maggie Stivata. I don't know an awful lot about this series bearing, but I just know that it's really hyped so I am trying to get through a lot of the books that I have seen that I reckon that I will like just for the fact that I want I want to try them. I want to try and like read all these books, see if they actually are hype worthy for me personally but I also found this one on Amazon for like two quid so I was like wow I definitely need to try it now. Even if Blue hadn't been told her true love would die if she kissed him she would stay away from boys especially the ones from the local private school. Known as Raven Boys they only mean trouble. This is the year that she'll be drawn into the strange and sinister world of the Raven Boys and the year Blue will discover that magic does exist. This is the year she will fall in love. It sounds really cute. I don't know I'm hoping that I really enjoy this. Um, I have noticed that many of my paperback copies in this haul are a little bit battered and I don't know why. Um, that makes me a little bit sad, but yeah. Once again, another series that I am looking forward to starting. <laughs> the next series that I want to start is the Mistborn series by Brandon Sanderson. So this is The Final Empire, the first book in that series. Everyone says that this is where you should really start with Brandon Sanderson, but personally, I've already read Skyward by him, and I think that was the best place for me to start because it's based more around spaceships, and that is what I'm really into at the minute. This one is basically a story of what if the bad guy won. That is how I've seen it summarised, and that sounds really interesting to me, and I really hope I enjoy it, but they are chunky books. All of them are so chunky. So... Oh. I'm looking forward to reading them but I'm also a little bit terrified. <laughs> the next book is actually me trying to finish off a trilogy and that is The Burning God by R.F. Quang. This is the third and final book in the Poppy War series and I am actually still yet to finish The Dragon Republic but I'm also part way through it and I am desperate to actually finish the whole series this year so I thought I'd include the final book. This is the stunning Illumicra edition with the sprayed edges. I really enjoyed the first book of this it is really hard hitting i every time i talk about it i love it i rave about it but check the trigger warnings because there are an awful lot in there it's not fluffy at all <laughs> like it's quite hard hitting so yeah check the trigger warnings but oh this series like what i've read already the first book i loved the part of dragon republic that i've already read i'm loving I just can't wait. I just, oh, she's gonna break me, I think. But I think that's the case with a lot of these series that I'm looking to finish is that I'm expecting a lot of them to actually just completely break me. But I'm okay with it. 
The next book is yet again the start of another series and that is A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. I have started this book before but I need to restart it. Um, I was really loving what I was reading, I was quite distracted at the time so you know we're just <laughs> we're gonna start it again um the, again once again the stunning illumicrate edition i love these books i think they're stunning and i think that they were talking about bringing out the second and third book this year and i want to read the first book so that i know what i'm getting into for the second and third because once again i have bought special edition boxes for books that i've never read but that look pretty and i've always wanted to so why get the normal edition book and have doubles of them when I can just buy the special editions and have one not. That is kind of my thought process. I'm not sure if that's the right thought process, but you know, here we go. Um, so yes, I'm looking forward to getting to this. The 18th book, I know I haven't been counting for every single book, but we are now on the 18th book. The 18th book that I want to read in 2021 is The King of Scars by Lee Bardugo. So this is like another spin-off series from the Grishaverse. The next book, Rule of Wolves, is out this year, so I just want to read this so I can actually get into that one as well. I love what I've read from Lee Bardugo. I think she's an amazing author. Um, I have got a lot of catching up to do, once again, in her series. I have not read the whole of the Shadow and Bone series, and I have not read this, but I have read Six of Crows, and I have read Ninth House. So we've read, I don't know just under half of her books I guess but I am looking forward to this one I'm looking forward to finding out more about um Zoya because Zoya is mentioned in the Six of Crows duology I'm looking forward to finding out more about Nina who's obviously a main character from the Six of Crows duology Nikolai is also mentioned in there somewhere so I'm just looking forward to actually learning more about these characters because they they just seem like fantastic people in their own ways and I just I want to learn more we are finally trying to finish off another series instead of starting new ones and the series I next want to finish is Empire of Gold by S.A. Chakraborty. So this is the City of Brass trilogy. I've read the first two last year. I loved them both. I cannot wait to read this. I'm hoping it's going to be a five stars because the other two were four stars. That was just because, you know, trying... It wasn't... There wasn't enough tear jerking. Not that I've cried at a book yet, but there wasn't enough of it. So, yes, I'm hoping that this is going to be a five stars. I cannot wait. Once again, another series that is probably going to break me, but I'm okay with that. Like, I just want to experience this. So, the series is set in um, a magical world of Deavabad, so the city of Brass, and we are following our main characters, Nahari, who is a, a street hustler, I would say. She uh, has the power to kind of tell when people are sick, but she's kind of turned that power around and she uses it to con rich men out of money on the streets of Cairo. And one day she does a normal exorcism a little bit differently and she manages to summon a djinn called Dara and he is the one that takes her to Deavabad because she is a long lost Nahid I think is how you pronounce it and we also meet Ali who is a prince in this world and I just love the series so so much like it's fantastic so I cannot wait to finish it and I'm hoping to finish it this year. We are on book 20 so these are the last two books that I plan to read this year well not that I plan to read but that I want to actually read this year the 20th book being The Daughter of Smoke and Bone, once again another series that I want to start. Um, I have the second and third books on order from Illumicrate because it's the Illumicrate edition once again. They're all stunning, all of these editions. I love them. Obviously all of them. Empire of Gold is the stunning fairy loot edition. I love pretty books. Um, but in this book we're following a young girl called Karu and she collects teeth for a demon called Brimstone and she lives like two lives, one in the human world and one in this like other world but I don't know an awful lot about it but I am really hoping to get to this this year once again I think I plan to read it this month but I just haven't and yeah I have heard so many good things and so many people rave about these books but I just I can't wait I'm hoping to love this I'm sure I will I'm sure I will but yeah that's the next one and the final book that I want to read in 2021 is Blood and Honey by Shelby Mahoran. I haven't heard the best things about this book. I've heard it's a bit more slow going, but I personally loved Serpent and Dove. I think I gave it like five stars. Maybe it would come out differently if I did it on Core Pile, which is the new thing that I'm doing, which is the rating system made by Book Roast. 
other, otherwise known as G, I will link her video down below of using that spreadsheet. But this is the last book that I really, really want to get to this year. This is the second book in the Serpent and Dove series. The first book, Serpent and Dove, we are following Lou, who is a witch, and Reed, who is a witch killer pretty much witch hunter is probably the better phrase and they end up having to get married because of some freaky turn of events and i just loved the book i thought it was amazing um but i'm hoping this one kind of does well or i'm wondering if it's gonna suffer from middle book syndrome which a lot of books seem to do where the second one is kind of just like a walking book rather than an action book but we shall see but yeah, this is the 21st book that I want to read in 2021. So those are all of the books that I want to read this year in 2021. Obviously, they are not going to be the only books that I read this year. Hopefully, hopefully I get into like a really big reading kick and I just whiz through a lot of these. That'd be fantastic. Um, but January, if this year is anything like January, January I've been a bit slumpy, but there's been a lot going on. So hopefully I can just kick that habit up the butt and I can actually get back to reading and really enjoying it so that is what I plan to do but otherwise that is everything for this video please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. it really supports me and my channel let me know down below what is your top book that you want to read in 2021 like are any of these books on your list let me know um and please consider subscribing to me once again down below if you want to see more of me see my journey see if i read these books see in which tbr they actually turn up in whether it's march or whether it's december we don't know try and read all of them in december that could possibly happen we just don't know but yeah consider subscribing to me if you want to see more content from me but otherwise that is all from me today i hope you're having an amazing day and i will see you soon in the next video bye